Thanks everyone! Thank you! <laughs> Give me a fucking break! <laughs> Give me a fucking break! Do you want to give uh, our friends at home an update on the last 24 hours? Well, I don't know about an update, but 20 years ago I dreamt of travelling around the world <laughs> over land. Um, and, well, as you can see, it's amazing. It really is. <laughs> I could have been sat at home um, in the garden with the wife having a glass of wine. But Instead? No, instead. He's no, living the dream. I'm living the dream. I love it. I love every minute of it. Um, <laughs> wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. To you, anybody? <laughs> well, it's been nothing but a pain in the ass really the last 24 hours. I said yesterday, yesterday that Paul had a little problem with his bike, which I think we got sorted out, or which we definitely got sorted out. It was a mission though. And uh, But one step ahead and two steps backward, we've managed to bollocks up the iPad somehow. That won't charge anymore. Um, don't know whether we'll get over that. And either my data card is full on the first ream of videotape or we've lost the first ream of videotape, but hopefully we won't. Uh, nothing we've done. We've looked after everything, haven't we, Paul? Yep, yep, no. Nope. Really, really looked after everything, but I suppose that's all the smashing and bashing about. So, hopefully, hopefully we haven't. We was up early this morning because we had to ride from Volgograd to Salatov. Right, yeah, we have just found a very, very nice looking hotel. The Saratov. The Saratov, which comes with inbuilt Russian misery. Does it? Yeah, three star, four star hotel, no hot water. But, ho hum, we'll see where we go from there. Anyway, what about the passport? Right, no problems at all, she'll do it all for us, get it registered, do it all for us, no problems. So I said, but we have to be guests for them to do it. Okay. The chef, we'll it. Alright, but, okay. pay through the nose, we'll get us now. Okay. Thank you. Sounds about right, doesn't it? Yeah, just about. And of course, we took full advantage of the free Wi-Fi. And due to our location, where we were in Russia, we knew communications were going to be a bit rough from here on in. We never passed up the opportunity to have a coffee break and the occasional comfort break. But for our Asia, most of them left a lot to be desired. Whoa. That's not happening on the road. Back on the road and without much relief, we headed off to the Kazakh border. Just the other side of this bridge, I don't know if you can quite see it, is the, uh, it's the border with Kazakhstan. Um, it's the Russian out before the Kazakh in. But you know, all day we've just been riding from Saratov. And they go on about the mystical plains of Kazakhstan, but there's nothing. There's nothing conceivable. It's just flat, flat, flat all the time. We've nothing to see. We've, we've 
we've had a train line following us most of the day, just splintered little towns and fractured villages, but you know, there is not an awful lot here. Well, there we go, another border crossing sorted out, out of Russia and uh, into Kazakhstan. We'll take back all the nasty thoughts we had about it. Uh, officialdom on both borders, coming out and coming in was a lot friendlier this time than it has been before. And I, uh, I really do think that the other side of Russia are not a happy bunch because they're too close to Europe to enjoy life. But uh, we'll see how it goes. It's been a hard day, but uh, we're a couple more hours and maybe we'll find somewhere to sleep. First night in Kazakhstan. First night of many. First one in Kazakhstan. Yeah, it slept really well last night. It slept really well. I'm glad I'm in the tent though, because there's hundreds of bugs out there. <laughs> hundreds. After a night of wild camping, we was awoken to the sound of livestock walking past our camp. And it wasn't long before the farmer come up to meet us to see what we was up to. It's fair to say he was fascinated by us and by our bikes. And after checking us out, he went on his way back to his animals. We had to make a stop at our BMW service centre in Kazakhstan. Right, the Exxon Valdez has got, has got nothing on this. We can, we can only apologise to the Kazakh government about the oil slicking their bus stop. But uh, needs must. But what the camera don't show is I'm two foot from human shit. <laughs>
We're, uh, we're, we're staying here tonight in uh, just on the outskirts of Novosibirsk. We're about, I don't know, 40 miles from Novosibirsk and uh, <laughs> it turns out that Novosibirsk is the absolute centre of Russia geographically. And <clears throat> Kazakhstan, you know, Kazakhstan, uh, when we was in Kazakhstan last week, it, it, it was an absolute furnace, it was so hot. And even the wind, <laughs> even the wind as you're riding through, riding through your motorcycle jacket did nothing, did absolutely nothing to cool you, it was so hot. And here in Siberia, it, it's just, freezing we was in the city of Ormsk yesterday and um, hello Paul we was in the city of Ormsk yesterday and people were still in full on winter clothing and uh, it's just a transition really of coming from one country to another uh, it's incredibly cold and wet and the bikes are an absolute disgrace Novosibirsk on the outskirts and we're waiting to see we're waiting for an hour or so to go and see Igor it's, uh, it's a bit too early but we just stopped at this railway carriage which you believe is a cafe what a shit up Stopped off to see Eagle and his lovely girlfriend Zena, and neither one of them could resist the temptation to have their photograph taken on the bike. Well, what a treat we had! We had a lovely day with Eagle and Zena as they took us to their Novosibirsk Transport Museum. Leaving Novosibirsk yesterday, Paul and I rode down to Barna all in the pissing down rain and uh, we had a lot of difficulty trying to find digs and one thing or another we ended to leave and just we decided to leave and we headed south, further south on the M52. And uh, after a lot of misdirection from locals, I suppose you should know better, eventually we come across a little motel. Uh, it's about £12 a night, but for that, for that, you get a shelter from the rain, a blocked toilet, and no water, hot or cold. So really, you know, we should be grateful. Well, I'd really like to go public with my next statement. Um, never in the future am I ever going to badmouth travel lodge hotels. I think they're wonderful. Well, we're in downtown Bisk, which turned out not to be Barnaul. But I don't know if you can see behind me, the weather's starting to break. And we managed to buy some supplies and some, some pasta and some this, that and the other. And this will probably be our last bit of civilization before we head down towards Mongolia. So uh, we, we just hope it doesn't rain anymore, because it rain is a pain in the ass. But we'll have to wait and see. 
he packed the bikes and headed south to the Altai region. Without a doubt, Russia's best kept secret, the Altai region. What a fantastic place to travel through. What was current? I, I, um, I've just gone out and had a word with our landlady. Yep. And um, she's shown me the, all the facilities. Would you like me to show you? Yes, that'd be very nice, thank uh, you. One second, walk this way. Um, just to let you know, uh, Paul, that uh, the toilet is over there. No uh, about? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, that's fine. That's lovely. Okay, it's local. We're in the middle of the night. Yes. Okay, yes. And what about washing facilities? Oh, I'll show you. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, furthermore, she said that uh, there's plenty of fresh water. It's a little bit cold, but there's the sink or the bath, should you care to partake. Oh, that's really nice. So at least we've got unlimited amounts of cold water. I'm glad we came. So tonight finds us in the Altai region. Mongolia is probably about 300 miles down that way. And uh, we must, <laughs> we're up early tomorrow morning because we must get into Mongolia. Because uh, tomorrow being Friday is the last day, the borders aren't open over the weekend. The road all the way down here has been pretty good, but the scenery has been epic. And and it's a bit of a gradual in, but the more you get into the Altai, the more beautiful it becomes. I mean, it's it's like it's like it's like being in Switzerland or somewhere like that. It's, it's a real treat, and and without a doubt, so far has been the most beautiful part of Russia. I mean, what a treat, and we're on our way out. But it is lovely, and uh, you know, from from the dust that is Novosibirsk and the trans and the and the barrenness if you like of the Trans-Siberian Highway to be here is is a real treat it's fantastic really good there is one thing we have heard and other people have told us is that this part of the world because of its proximity to China we're quite close to China apparently this part of the world is crawling with KGB oh, I, mean, I don't know pray from that what you will I uh, I just think that's a bit of Soviet pro ex-Soviet propaganda and an old wives' tale. I haven't seen any. I haven't seen anything. Anything. People just look too busy getting on with their everyday lives to be uh, to be worried about anything like that. We've uh, just filled up with fuel um, about five kilometres that way and it'll be the last fuel we get in Russia because 30 kilometres down that way is Mongolia and uh, and I guess in about 30 miles the tarmac runs out and I've, I've, I've been sensing, as we've been riding along, I've been sensing this air of uh, foreboding that's coming over us and uh, because we know from here on in it's it's going to be hard. I don't want to keep saying it but it's going to be hard and I think for me it's all been about getting to this point but uh, wish us luck.
Finally, here we are on the far southeastern border of Russia with uh, Mongolia and a little town called Tashanta. As you can see, it's an amazing place. It's full of everything you could possibly need, um, except everything. Um, let's see what Mongolia has to offer. So I have it on good authority by my mate here that the Mongolian guards have gone for lunch. Was it? It'd be Russian, wouldn't it? Yeah, no, Russian guards have gone to lunch from 1 till 2, but they shut the border at 6 o'clock. So we got here then? Yep, just. Ready for tiffin. But what we don't know is that the Mongolians go for lunch from 2 till 3. <laughs> With a bit of messing about we managed to get over the border into Mongolia and uh, we got to the Russian border and we had to wait an hour whilst they finished their lunch and uh, that's sweet and uh, and then we come through the most surrenders no man's land into, into Mongolia and, and they were fantastic it took us probably about an hour to get through to uh, to, to actually get to drive into Mongolia but we're here now we're in Ogli and we've had um, probably about 80 miles most of it off-road <laughs> on tracks and one thing and another and um, fortunately we met up with some other people so we come down here in a bit of a convoy and we're staying tonight as you can see behind me in a year so that's a first well day one in Mongolia was fantastic we uh, rode over a huge mountain pass and uh, Descending down loads of dirt roads into, into a barren, dry, incredibly windy and cold valley. Riding along the valley floor, we, uh, we after about an hour or so, we just stopped the bikes and then we, we met up with some other people, so we, we hightailed it to here together. So that, that turned out to be good. But uh, anyway, dinner's been had tonight, a little bit of pasta, nice and simple. And the others have gone out to have dinner to get out somewhere, but we're just chillaxing tonight. It's been quite a day. But I'm laid here in, in the yurt and it's absolutely roasting. Got that little fire going, it's like 40 degrees in here. And in the winter when it's minus 30 outside, I just don't know how they cope with it. Still, I don't suppose they have many choices really. But uh, so far so good and uh, wonder what tomorrow brings. Give it another week. We got nits, mate. Yeah. <laughs> oh, if I haven't, I will have soon. These girls are absolutely fantastic, you know, in their design and their makeup and one thing or another, and all the inc intricacies, I suppose is the word, and all the detail in, in the in the painting and one thing or another, and the fabrics that they use. I mean, literally, I mean, outside of that door, it's dirt, earth, stone and nothing and in here it's it's I guess it's palatial. It's I guess it's palatial. This is absolutely everything they need and it's it, it's uh, it's home as they know it. Little did we know, there was trouble waiting for us ahead. The roads being as bad as this, it was only a matter of time before one of us had an accident. And unfortunately, it was Paul. On these unbelievably rough roads and river crossings, he fell a couple of times, and that left him unable to ride his bike. So we had to find an alternative way to cross this magnificent country.
This is my friend Anna. Uh, I'm following a, a bad accident and uh, I've damaged my ankle. This man has organised transport to Ulan Bata. Fantastic. Good man. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Well, uh, further to my tumble the other day, um, I've ended up with a, quite a bad injury to my left hand side of my ribs and a, and a twisted ankle. And I'm not in a position to ride my bike anymore. So I'm going to take a couple of days off and we're going to take a ride in with um, our friend who owns this truck into Ulaanbaatar because uh, most of the rest of the journey is off road and on sand. And um, I personally can't take the risk of having another accident in the middle of nowhere. So um, we'll catch up in New Lambert. seven in the evening and our driver's just popped into that building there which is a little cafe believe it or believe it not and it's just a settlement of yurts in the middle of nowhere you know middle of nowhere we're still I don't know it's still another 24 hours from Ulaanbaatar um, or something like that it's been a really really hard day and off I mean we'll probably still be driving until two o'clock in the morning and then we'll be sleeping in the car and it's fucking freezing I wanted to see uh, I wanted to see Mongolia, but not really from from the front seat of a cab. But you know, accidents happen, I suppose. But thankfully, nobody's hurt. Well, nobody's majorly hurt. That's the main thing. And when we get to UB, we go a few days off and just chill out. And uh, but do you know what? To be quite honest, I've probably seen more of it from the cab and the lorry. Um, we did about 350 miles, you know, on the bikes thus far. And we'll probably do another 300 on the way out. Probably about a thousand in the middle. We've been in the truck, but or well, we would have been in the truck. But the thing is, when you're on the bike, it's beautiful, but you, you can't look because you're too busy looking at the ground in front of you. But no, it's been all right. But it's just, just I'll go in the truck. But there you go. It's not an holiday. It's an adventure. We got into Ulaanbaatar last night after after about 58 hours in that mad truck and uh, we uh, we was unceremoniously dumped on the outskirts of the city um, and we had to unload his truck of all the other crap that he had on it so we could get our bikes off and when we got our bikes off we had to rebuild them put all the panniers back on and all the bags back on all the shite back on and everything's got uh, humongous layer of crap on it because we've just done a thousand miles across the desert so um, I put Paul's bike back together and then my own and then I had a flat tire no we've got nowhere to stay in the city uh, so you know 10 o'clock at night it's dark I'm taking the wheel off I'm repairing a puncture and uh, and then eventually we work our way through through the city and and we find the place that we are now and but it did seem like you know one crisis after another after another and you know the day that Paul came off his bike I would never have thought I would have been here you know we didn't have to wait too long to get back in the saddle 
because after a few days of resting, Paul was really keen to get on the move again. You can't keep a good man down. We left the Oasis early this morning because the traffic in the city is just absolute chaos. And as the sign says, we're leaving Ulaanbaatar now and we're heading back up to Russia. We've really enjoyed our time in the city and had a really good rest at the Oasis. And uh, been to see a few things and, and, and whatnot, sorted the bikes out. But we're ready to get back on the road now. And I think we're leaving Ulaanbaatar just at the right time because it's a horrendous dust storm, it's crazy. But anyway, we're off, we're on our way. You don't see that in Uxbridge, mate, do you? No. Leaving the land of the wild horses, we headed north back into Siberia, towards Ulan Ude, when we knocked upon the gate of a man called Sergei, who happily let us camp in his garden. Uh, good morning. Um, well, it's uh, nine o'clock in the morning, and last uh, night we had to throw ourselves on the mercy of this very good man here, Sergei who um, is, well, I would say he's a Russian gentleman, but uh, he's so, so close to Mongolia, it doesn't really make any difference. Um, he's part of uh, what is known, known locally as the Borat tribe. Um, and they just seem to be extremely friendly. And last night we threw ourselves on their mercy and uh, we ended up camping in their yard. And uh, this gentleman here um, looked after us like he's known us all of his life. Thank you very much. And, uh, thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. We leave Sergei, Sergei, his family, and the Buryat people this morning, and we have to ride up to Ulan Ude, which is not far, 120 miles, through this amazing landscape. Absolutely amazing, it's so empty. And uh, we've got to go to Ulan Ude to get our visa sorted out. I think it's stamps, formality, really. But from then on, we, we spent maybe 12 days just going east. To all these Siberian towns, Chita, Tinda, Kabaros, to Vladivostok. But we've been told along the way, and it's not quite so much scaremongery, that there could be a few strange people along the way. And uh, we've been warned and shown not to go in particular villages, but you kind of think that if they're half as nice as, as Sergei and his family, you know, we'll be okay. I'm, I'm sure we'll be okay, but that's travelling, I guess you meet the good and the bad. But Let's hope for our sake it's all good. Rode into Ulan Ude today from the outskirts coming to the city centre. We actually rode underneath the Tsar Nicholas II archway. Straight slap bang into the city centre and uh, the typical Soviet square and just over there is what has to be the largest bust of Lenin in all of Russia. In fact, I think it is. We're booked into a hotel just over there behind us and we just had to sort out passports and visas and things like that today, just bollocks really. But we just come into this city and it's a real surprise, it's really green and vibrant and wonderful buildings and there's some crappy ones too, but you've got these, <laughs> you've got these wonderful old stone and wood architecture really really old ye oldy worldy stuff and then right behind it concrete monstrosities you know my word but this this city for me has got quite a european feel quite a european buzz but the, the people i mean such the, there's such a diversity of people that are so many people with mongol features here in southern russia and you know i just wasn't expecting it it throws you i mean for every Russian looking Russian if you like there's there's seven or eight people that look like they've just nipped over from from a Mongol day trip and uh, It really really froze you, but I suppose that's travel 
But uh, I've been on the road now seven weeks and uh, I don't mind saying this is the first time in seven weeks I am. I'm really, really, really missing home and the people that mean most to me. And so tonight, we're not camping, we've got our own villa. It hasn't been a particularly long day since Ulelu Day, but it's been an eventful one. We've had to sort out insurance and visas and one thing or another. And we left the very palatial Baikal Plaza about five hours ago. And my mate, my mate decided to go knocking on doors and he threw himself on the mercy of this lovely Russian guy called Mikhail and who we've yet to confirm whether he's a Siberian axe murderer. But, um, so, Paul, talk, talk, us, talk us about where we are tonight. Uh, well, I haven't actually got a clue where we are. We're somewhere in the middle of Siberia, and as you can probably see from the film, uh, or from the pictures, um, it's um, quite a place, really. Um, the flies are in abundance, and there's no charge for them, by all accounts. Um, but it's dry, and it's out of the weather. So um, that's a lot to be know. grateful for. Yeah, it's a lot to be grateful for, and it means we haven't got to put our tent up and fight the mosquitoes out on the uh, trans Iberian Highway. We're on our way to uh, from Ulan Ude to Chita, and it was getting a little bit late. And um, we go, <laughs> and uh, we decided to knock on a door. And this wonderful gentleman, Mikhail or Michael, he said that we could. Uh, we asked if we could camp in his garden, but he wouldn't hear none of it. And uh, we've got a tiny little wooden dutcher that uh, that we're sleeping in. So that's the first. I've always wondered what it was like inside one of these. But uh, tonight, I'm going to get to find out. Mikhail on TV. Huh? On TV. <laughs> We left um, Uncle Mikhail's this morning after a coffee and a biscuit and we rode to Cheetah. It's now, I don't know, 10 to 5 in the evening and we've just negotiated the city of Cheetah. Got lost once, but we seem to be on the right road now. Um, we've just come over a police checkpoint. We didn't get pulled yet again. Yet no. again, we didn't get pulled by the police. No. But um, this road we're looking down now, we're on it for 2,100 kilometres to Kabarovsk. We ain't going to make that today. No way. Hi, hi, campers. We've been uh, travelling um, on the Trans-Siberian Highway, which you can see is just down there, left to right, left to right at the bottom. And it's about 2,200 miles long, and there's nothing along it. I mean, really, really nothing along it. It's very not very well catered for, there's not enough fuel stations or one thing or another, and there's really very few places to camp. There's all this wonderful wilderness either side, but you just can't get in, and you certainly can't get your bike off the road. And this track, this track that we come up off the road last night, it's um, a kind of service track for, chances are, where, where we actually camped is, is where the road builders um, put all their trucks when they were living here building the road. But I mean, it's crazy, it's wonderful scenery, but you just can't get off the road. You know, if it's not the Armco barrier stopping you get off, it's just the terrain, the trees are so thick you can't get off. And you know, to what makes things worse is we got here last night, we had a pitch camp. And then, and, then, and then Paul had what we thought was a flat, so we're just going to check that out this morning. And because uh, and, uh, we pumped it up last night and the air stayed in it, so that was a bit of luck. But we've we got to go back to a little town about 10 kilometres, 15 kilometres back to Morka because we just realised there's no fuel for a big gap. And, and we're going to give ourselves every opportunity to go on, uh, on full tanks. But uh, still, all part of the drama in Siberia.
no matter how remote the places that we visited, we always managed now and again to try and get clean. We're heading for Scovredino. Would you believe it? It's the one in the middle and it's just over a hundred miles. We uh, we went back to that town called we went back to that town called Morka. I mean what what a shithole. I mean it it was a real dump and uh, everybody was looking i mean everybody was looking it's really disconcerting to be there but i mean this this road i mean this road look there's nothing on it there's nothing on it and and we're like i don't know 900 miles from the city we want to get to and they spin it round <laughs> nothing nothing absolutely bugger all and it's quite disconcerting because you know if oh, it really plays with your mind because i mean look there's nothing there's absolutely nothing. Yeah, it's me, you and the cuckoos. I'll tell you what, it's absolutely nothing. And if anything went wrong out here, I mean, that, that's all part of the adventure, I know, but I mean, if anything went wrong out here, you're fucked. And yesterday we filled up with fuel in the last city, or in the last town city, in the last town, we filled up with fuel. And we rode for 80 miles to find somewhere to pull off the road. Cause it's almost impossible. We've got all these steep banks and, it, and uh, Armco barrier. Did you say that? A car? <laughs> that's, a, that's a 20 minute event. Anyway, it's almost impossible to get off the road because all these steep banks this, and this endless Armco barrier. And it makes it very difficult to find somewhere to camp. Well, here we are, and uh, we left uh, Cheetah three days ago, and we've been on the uh, on the Siberian highway for three days solid, and uh, we've arrived here at a brand spanking new junction in the middle of nowhere. As you can probably see from the sign behind me, it's about 3,200 kilometres that way to Magadan, um, which Greg and myself are not going to do because of the road of bones. Uh, we're going to carry on straight behind me, uh, approximately 12, 1300 miles to more, towards Vladivostok and really the end of our journey in Russia. Um, but it, it's been quite hard going really and um, me for one, and I think Greg will bear me out, um, it will be nice to get some normality back into our lives. Uh, we'll see where it goes from here. We're just going to denigrate the sign with our Moto Trekker sticker. Stick, stick the motor trekkers up there, mate. <laughs> motor trekkers strike again. Let's hope, let's hope that Raphael and Daniel see it. Yeah, be good. Cool. Here we are, 65 miles east of the Magadan turnoff, and uh, we knocked on a gentleman's gate um, who turned out to be called Yuri, and uh, he's allowed us to camp in his absolutely wonderful garden. And it's a beautiful evening, and we couldn't have wished for more. Well, <laughs> not wishing to look the gift horse in the mouth, if there was just one more thing we could have wished for, and that was to have been a little bit further than 70 metres from the Trans Siberian Railway. Because <laughs> I think tonight that's going to keep us up. Yeah. For uh, about three nights now, we've slept quite close to the Trans-Siberian Highway. <laughs> but I kind of... <laughs> I kind of seems to be just a bit closer. Fuck me, it's going <laughs> <it's> to <laughs> come through the tent. Good <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Good night, Greg. Good night, Paul. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, 74 carriages going by our side. And I can actually, yeah, I can actually feel the vibration. Well, after that rude awakening, we got up, made some breakfast, said goodbye to Yuri's wife and the dog, and made our way to Kabarovsk. Uh, well, here we are. Um, well, I don't really know where we are, to be honest with you. Last night we rocked up in a little town, um, which uh, earlier on in our trip people warned us against and said don't go into the villages. But uh, we turned up here last night and we were looked after by a wonderful family. Um, they gave us room in their house and fed us a supper and have given us breakfast. And it's now uh, 10 to 8 in the morning and we're on our way. Uh, they wouldn't accept any payment. They just wanted to shake our hands and uh, give us a good luck charm. So uh, thank you again, Mother Russia. It was an absolute treat for me and a highlight of the trip for us both that so many Russians invite us into their homes. With the end of the Asia leg clearly in view, it seems so long ago, our first night out on the road spent with Hugo and Anne. Having come this far and taken it through Mongolia and given it a right hard pasting, my bike was making noises that uh, I'd never heard before. Hardly surprising though, the state of some of the roads in this part of the world. There you go, there's another little section uh taken care of, um, testing my off-road skills to their limit and I'm still upright so we'll uh, see where the rest of it goes. But as for my bike, I was in trouble and I needed to get to Vladivostok. We rocked up at Folks Motorcycle Club in Vladivostok to see if they could help me with my bike but on closer inspection two of the gears were knackered so that was it, my trip was over and I was flying home. Well, this isn't the way we, uh, we wanted to finish our trip. We took two flights to get across Russia to, uh, to here in, you know, from Vladivostok to Moscow, and we're here in Moscow. And I'm very soon going to get on that plane and fly back to England. And my bike, all the smashing and bashing about, I've lost first gear and part of second gear. So we, we tried as much as we could to get everything sorted out, but it was just going to take approximately about six weeks to get the parts to us. So it's not something we could really do. So the bikes are coming back on a container ship and they'll be back in a couple of months. But the, uh, the shame of it is the hardest part of the journey is done. You know, it's just going to be a piece of piss riding across America. Still, we've had a fantastic time and, uh, and uh, let's, let's, <laughs> let's see what happens. We might, you never know, we might go again. Thanks everyone! Thank you!
could strike again.